Hi, I'm Dwayne. And I'm Rachel. From Travel by the Book TV, where we explore literary travel. Today we are in Durango, Colorado, and we are about to ride on this really cool steam engine. But later we are going to go to the Strader Hotel. The Strader Hotel is famous for Louis L'Amour. There's Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Louis L'Amour, who stayed at the Strader every August for about 10 years. Can you tell us a little bit about Louis L'Amour, Rachel? I will Rachel? tell you a little bit. He's, he wrote over a hundred novels, uh, but he had a pretty interesting life. Um, did a bunch of different jobs, including a seaman, lumberjack, elephant handler, skinner of dead cattle, um, you know, what everybody aspires to be when they're in high school, uh, a miner, a, an officer uh, on a, a destroyer during World War II, um, a bunch of different stuff. He, he, was, a, he was a factotum. You know what that is? No. It's a man with many jobs. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to have a good time. So come along. Please subscribe. And you, you, uh, you're going to love this hotel. It's amazing. In this episode, we'll tour the historic Strader Hotel. We'll visit Louis L'Amour's room. Then we'll eat at the Diamond Belt Saloon, which was a source of inspiration for him. Gondola cars are really great if the weather's nice. We got inside the cars because Rachel hates being out in the cold. But the weather's so nice and the views are so spectacular. I couldn't I couldn't stay in there. I had to come out. We are in Durango, Colorado, and we are about to enter the historic Strader Hotel to get a tour from the resident historian. So let's go inside and check it out. This is the lobby, and let me tell you, the woodwork in here is amazing. And I'm here with the resident <laughs> historian, Roy Mywarm. Did I pronounce it correctly? You sure did. Um, who is going to tell us all things interesting and exciting. But I'm also sure you guys might recognize this as a film stage right here, movie stage. This is where Chevy Chase was filmed a vacation. And that's is where they robbed the money from the cash register. Before, really? before they go to the uh, Grand, Grand Canyon. Canyon. Yep. Absolutely. So this is actually where the straighter story starts is in this building right here. Um, Durango was started in 1880, mainly because of the train building in its terminal just a few blocks away from us. Um, when Drangle became incorporated, they sent out a nationwide ad looking for plumbers, and they were looking for someone to bring the water from the Animus River to the new town of Durango. Um, Henry and his two brothers, Fred and Frank, were from Cincinnati, Ohio, when they saw the ad, and so they responded to it. Well, once they got to Durango, they realized there were better opportunities than being plumbers in Durango, since Durango was just up and running. So in 1880, they built this building um, out of brick, and in 1881, they opened it as the, or the Strader Brothers Paint and Oil Store. Henry was a pharmacist by trade. So around 1887, he wanted to build the grandest hotel in Durango, so he built the Strader Hotel um, to host his pharmacy. But what's interesting about this part here is when this building was first built in 1880, this was the original brickwork. Okay, and then when they built the hotel, 
the Columbian Hotel, they wanted to take the front of the building off to make it look more like a hotel instead of a store. So they took some of it away, and this brick now is from 1893. Okay. You can see the difference. Yeah. Wow. Right. Just look at all this work, all the wallpapering. So also back in the day when a lot of these communities were being built, people didn't trust banks or banks weren't available. And so they would build hiding spots throughout the building. And here's one of the hiding spots right here. And then over here, and then not only did the buildings have hiding spots, but sort of a lot of the furniture. And many years ago, we had a dresser that was taken up to one of the rooms. And one of the guests was kind of poking around on a little bit when they found this pistol laying in it. Oh, no way. And at first they thought it was a prop gun. And then in 1969, Butch Cassidy's Sundance Kid was filmed here near Durango. And just a few miles east of us is where they blew up the train and all the money came flying out of the train. Mm -hmm. And this is some of the money right here. Oh, well, that ought to do it. Thank you, there's enough dynamite there, Butch. But in this one here, Lillian Russell was a very famous opera singer back in the day. In fact, the very first long distance phone call that was ever made they used her voice and she sang a song. Well, when she was here in 1892, she accidentally left her corset laying in the room, which we have on display right now. So they contact her and apparently she's had plenty more so she wasn't worried about getting it back. So somebody put it in a frame. So one thing I'd like to tell folks is that if you're staying here and you're checking out, be sure to remove your underwear, otherwise it will end up in a shadow box. One thing that intrigues me here is this little typewriter that first came out. Most typewriters have about 2,500 parts to it. This one has around 250 parts to it. Oh, and so when it first came out, right away it became very popular with a lot of your journalists because they could travel in either the stagecoaches or you know, on trains compared to carrying those heavy typewriters. And then you were talking about how do we get this stuff. The Blickensturfer, that's what it's called. <laughs> when the Strader first opened in 1887, it was actually called the Strader House. Okay. It wasn't until many years later that it was called the Strader Hotel. So we don't really have much that shows the Strader House and a lot of our items. Well, about a month ago, I had an older couple that approached me from Arizona, and they'd had two key fobs that they had that had the Strader House name on it. Wow. Well, right away, I got very excited because we have a lot of the other fobs, but they all say Strader Hotel. Uh -huh. Well, okay. the Strader House fobs right there, all they wanted was a glass of wine to trade for those fobs. And to us, those are priceless. So anyway, we're right next to Louis Lamar's room here in room 221, which is the Harry Potter. Because it's right over the staircase here, and we'll look at this room now. Okay. Jack Turner, they've been here, they're like five generations here in Durango. Have their own. Oh, wow, this is, wait a minute. Oh, oh the stairs are that. Oh, that's freaky. <laughs> because I was expecting the, with the, the room to be just that little bit. When the Strader was first built in 1887, we opened with 50 rooms. And then around 1938 is when he expanded another 40 rooms toward the back 40. So we ended up with 90 rooms at that point. So this would have been one of the original rooms of 1887. Wow. I know. And we have one of the largest walnut antique collections under one roof here at the Strader. So virtually every single room, every part of this building is completely different. Wow. You will never see another room exactly the same. Most of the lights that we have here at the Strader now are all electric, but one thing I can tell you is a lot of the lights like this would have been oil lamps. This is where the oil would have been. Usually it would have been whale oil. And then any lights that would be facing up would have been the oil lamps. Any of the lights facing down would have been electric. Okay. But now these have all been converted into electric lamps now. Interesting. So that was it. That, this fixture was originally a, uh, an oil lamp fixture. Yes. How does... How does whale oil smell when it's burned? I don't know, and I don't want to know. <laughs> Does it smell fishy? <laughs> Sushi? No, fishy. <laughs> Sushi. <laughs> so we are just about to enter the Louis L'Amour room. Well, welcome to Louis L'Amour's room. Okay, so my question, are the furnishings the same? Are the original two Louis L'Amour staying here? Have things been replaced? 
pretty much from my understanding, the furniture itself is all the same. Okay. One thing I do remember about Louis one time when I looked in here is Louis had that desk up against the window and he would do a lot of his writings over there. One thing that also impressed me about Louis is he was one of the fastest two finger typers you would ever see. Once he got going, he could make that typewriter really sing. That's funny. Yes. I, I want to see the view that he would look at as he would sit here. Now, my grandmother worked here at the Strader for 22 years, back through the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and that was our connection to Louis L'Amour. She actually used to babysit uh, the kids also during that time. And that's kind of when I met him, because Bo is- His kids? Yes. Okay. His son, Bo, is a couple of years younger than me. Okay. And so I just remember meeting him a couple of times when we were kids. And would they stay, where would they stay? When well, they when they were there? younger, they stayed here, but mainly they would stay next door um, in room 223. I just know that through many years, he would always rent this room out for the entire month of August. So why Durango for Louis L'Amour? What was the connection? But what brought him here to the Strader Hotel is the Diamond Bell Saloon is directly below us. And each evening, including tonight, we have a honky-tonk piano player that will be playing. And with people hooting and hollering, would put him in his mindset to write his novels. So him and his wife, Kathy, would stay in here at that time when the kids would stay next door. And the kids could sleep through all that? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> See. This is why I, I am not a writer, because anything like that would drive me insane, and I would just be like, keep it down. <laughs> well, one good thing is we got a collection of all of his hardbacks right here. Oh, wow. Um, he wrote over just a little over 100 novels. He would even write poetry also. But the thing is, is he never wrote a Western novel. He wrote frontier stories. Right, right. So if you talk to Louis Lamar and said, hey, I like your Western novels, he would correct you. Yes. You've got How the West Was Won. Mm -hmm. This is one of the ones I like. Uh, the Sackets. Hondo. Right? Hondo, yes, that's yeah. what I was thinking of, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the building was expanded around 1938. That's when we added 40 more rooms toward the back part of the building. And during that time, even before then, we started the renovations of putting closets in. We now have indoor plumbing. Uh, before, we started out with a three-story privy, which had a wooden trough that went out to the river mm -hmm. at the time. And then you also had bed pans that were under the beds that, that you would use, and the maids would empty that by hand every day. I think I would prefer that to the three-story privy. <laughs> <laughs> I have nightmares about double-decker public restrooms. Yeah. I, mean, I really do. <laughs> and then have it empty in the river, but that's what was oh. common back in the day. Right, right. So, now our restaurant was um, in room 108, um, which used to be the restaurant when the building first opened. Well, they would also serve trout in that restaurant. But with the river being right there, it made me kind of wonder <laughs> what you were getting. <laughs> oh my gosh! So I don't know if you want to put that in. I don't huh, care. I, do. I, I, I appreciate the EPA and the FDA. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, so if I would like to come to the Strader Hotel and I would like to take one of your fabulous tours, what do I need to do? Best thing to do is call the front desk, depending if, my, if I'm scheduled here or not at that time. He did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It was wonderful to hear about it and wonderful to see this beautiful building. Well, thank you guys yeah. very much for coming Thanks to the Strader. And now we're going to test out the restaurants. Good. Good. Sorry. Hello. Good, thanks, too. Okay, go ahead and sit wherever you like. Thank you. So uh, we're in the Diamond Bell, and after a tour, what I'm really interested in, and I'm always interested in... They don't have it. ...is, is, um, is trout. No trout here? Nope. So we are waiting for our food order in the Diamond Bell Saloon which is the uh, saloon that was right beneath Louis Lamar's room. And this is where the noise would come percolating through his ceiling to inspire his literary genius to write the 100 plus novels that he wrote. And so if you get to stay in Lamar's room, room 222, you'll hear that piano. So there'll be, you have two options. One is to try to sleep or two is to come down and join the fun. The last thing I'm going to say is if you, about the Moore's room. 
is if you want to book his room, you can't just say, yeah, I want room 222, Louis Lamar's room. They don't reserve it individually. They'll reserve that style of room and that at that price range, but you can't specifically ask for it, which I think is wrong. You can't do that? I thought, no, you can't. Well, then how is it booked all the time? It's booked all the time just because there's like, there's a whole suite of like that level of rooms that they'll reserve. And I feel like People stay in there who don't appreciate it. You're right. And a note to the straighter, if you say, if you give people the option of staying in the Louis L'Amour room, I, I, I imagine you can charge more and people will all the time be filling it up just because they'll be coming specifically for that. I, I'm on a mission to get hotels to change that policy. If you have a special room with literary or historic significance, set it aside and make that room one that someone could, could, could rent whenever they wanted to. Here's our food. I ordered the salmon. What do you have, Rachel? I have a really expensive burger and fries. It's not really expensive. No, I mean as opposed to a McDonald's burger and fries. It's a huge burger. Okay, it's very good, but this is one thing that drives me nuts about people. When they're given food to taste, they and they immediately take a bite, and then like two seconds later, like, oh, it's delicious. You I do tell, that. You can't tell what it tastes like in two seconds. You have to chew it and have the have the maceration going on in order the to taste it. The maceration? Yes. Can we say that here? Anyway. So I was giving it the the attention it deserved, and it's very good. <laughs> I'm gonna try my salmon now. Ah. Mm, that's pretty good. That's good. See, I took one bite, and I said that's good. <laughs> you can't tell in two seconds. I can. No, you can't. I've let it m masticate. Okay, macerate. I Mas say macerate first of all, and that's not the right word. Okay. Masticate is to chew. Right. Well, I've chewed too. Macerate is to, like, what strawberries do with sugar. Yes. yes. Very good. We've decided you. it's good. So, macerate is what strawberries do with sugar when you want the juices to come out. Mm. So, so, maybe pulling, macerate is the right word. Yeah, I don't you're know. pulling the. Why don't you let us know if macerate is the right yeah. word? Yeah, if we're using the wrong term, put it in the comments. <laughs> don't put it in the comments. <laughs> don't put it in the comments. Well, what do you think? I think it was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're done with our uh, we're done with our uh, our tour of Durango. Uh, Strader Hotels behind us, amazing place, lots of fun. If you're in the area, stop, get a tour. It's a great, uh, it's really a cool tour. Yeah, right even there. if you're not staying there. Yeah, for sure. Um, and um, we're going to now uh, head home, and on the way, we're going to stop at Mesa Verde, the national park. We've never been there, and we've always wanted to. So, tour. we're Dwayne and Rachel from Travel by the Book. And, TV. Uh, we're Travel by the Book TV. So, keep watching. No, I said it wrong. Keep reading, keep traveling, and keep watching. That's the one. We'll see you.